All right, guys, Jay Teaser here. I wanted to go over the 2018 Mustang eSource book that was presented on the Mustang6G.com Mustang forums and courtesy of Mustang 6G member Like a Boss. So he got this up for us. It's 139 pages, so I'm not going to read all of it, but I do want to just kind of go through the quick and dirty. So this is all the information we already kind of know, which is the 10 speed, blah, 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 blah. But let's, there's a couple, there's a couple cool things that they, they, they really geek out on. Um, so let's just go through this real quick for if anybody's new for the 2018 Mustang, all of the guys that have already know this, just bear with me. We'll try to run through it real fast. So they're doing a revised EcoBoost engine and a pretty much a brand new five liter V8. Um, the five liter gets dual um, fuel injection that's going to be port and direct injection it's going to get a 10 speed auto as an option you're going to get active exhaust uh, magna ride dampening a digital display revised chassis designed to improve ride and handling adaptive cruise, cruise control bliss da -da 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 -da. all this stuff is kind of actually old so we're going to skip through a lot of this and we're just going to, so some of the stuff that they deleted. So you are getting new LED parking lamps and fog lamps, quad exhaust tips, different hood, different tail lights. It's quite a, quite a significant thing. So they're going to add Kona Blue, Orange Fury, and Royal Crimson. And they're getting rid of Grabber Blue, White Platinum Metallic Tri-Coat. They're getting rid of the California Special. And then the interior wheel packages, they're getting rid of the V6. Um... Okay, for the 18 Mustang, performance and handling wise, two engine choices, da 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 da. All right, so here's the here's the info on the engines. So I don't think that we knew the peak horsepower until this came out, but it's 460 horsepower at 7,000 RPM. So the peak power moved up 500 RPMs. I believe previous gen, which is the one I have, is. From 15 to 17, the GT 5 liter made 435, and I believe it was at 6,500 RPMs. So, it moved it up 500 RPMs, and later as we look into the engine, you'll see why it moved up 500 RPMs. It's because they changed up a few things, including the intake manifold and the cylinder head design and a few other things, but the, the juicy details are down below, which we'll get to in just a second. So 350 torque at 3,000 RPMs, and I'm assuming that's with the overboost function, which is uh, we'll talk about in just a second. And here's the EcoBoost. Overboost feature added to increase torque output. It basically means you floor it, and for about 15 seconds, you're going to get um, over 20 pounds of boost. So it basically, it, they're just allowing the boost to spike for 15 seconds, uh, which is going to give you more torque. So it should feel pretty stout, to be honest. Um, different drive modes. Um, okay, switchable engine mounts that provide two modes of order. Remember, I don't control by engine control module to a vacuum switch. In driving mode, the mount delivers high dampening and high dynamic rates for secondary ride shake in idle mode. The mounts deliver softer dynamic rates. That's interesting. So is it active uh, motor mounts? Switch, switchable engine mounts to provide two modes of operation. That's kind of interesting. So dynamic engine mounts on the uh, EcoBoost. Okay, I didn't catch that the first time through, which I don't have time to read all this, but we're just going to try to... There's a lot of cool features, and there's a lot of... It's hard to know what to talk about, what not to talk about, but we'll just try to get the good stuff. For the five liter, blah, 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 blah. So you've got the biggest things that I saw was revised cylinder heads, plasma transferred wire arc cylinder liner technology. The compression ratio is 12 to 1 now, it was 11 to 1. I believe you have yeah, bigger valves. The red line increased from 7,000 to 7,500. So 
power band moved up 500 RPMs. It also has a new upper intake manifold. So the, you're getting a new intake manifold. You got a forge crank, blah, 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 center forge connecting rods, cut out uh, pistons for the bigger valves, standard oil cooler, deep sump oil pan, da, da, da. Aggressive deceleration fuel shut off. When you let off the gas, it cuts fuel, so you increase the gas mileage. It allows it to coast. This talks about the plasma transfer wire arc cylinder liner technology. Basically, it saves, I read through this a minute ago, it basically, I think it saves eight pounds opposed to the previous technology. It's important, offers improved performance and durability. Less friction, lower heat, saves eight and a half pounds. There you go. Moving right along, fuel shut off, saves some gas mileage. Uh, it just cuts the fuel when you're decelerating. Although they added fuel when they're revving it up, you could hear the pop, so I don't know how they offset that. But um, I don't think I really saw anything for the EcoBoost. Like I said, you can read this. It's in the Mustang 6G. But it does have an overboost function. One acceleration you need, turbocharging automatic additional boost. Over, da, da, da. So they just upped the boost a little bit. Fell safe engine cooling system from potential damage due to loss of coolant line. The driver has to travel short distance to obtain service reach. The engine overheats will switch from normal all cylinder operation to alternating cylinder operation. That's pretty cool. Okay, so you don't get spark in every other cylinder if it overheats, it just pumps air through there to cool down the engine. Cool. Smart charging alternator, this is cool. Um, the alternator doesn't run if you're wide open throttle. I think that's what they're getting at. So it doesn't. Um, and then when you're engine braking, like when you're 5,000 RPMs and you let off the gas and the engine is slowing the car down, not your foot on the brakes, the alternator increases output so it sucks up more power from the drivetrain. That's cool. Increases efficiency that way. Um, twin independent variable down, uh, camshaft, blah, blah, blah. Just kind of fluff. They say right here the V8 manual transmission has undergone a total redesign. Okay, hopefully so, because we all know that it needed it. The MT82 is kind of terrible. I mean, it's strong as, it's not terrible, it's strong as an ox, but with that, it's, it makes it notchy. And that's what you get with the, the, the Mustang because it's like affordable, right? If you want it to shift buttery smooth and hold a thousand horsepower like it does then you're gonna have to pay more which is why the prices have gone up on the mustang because everybody wants it to shift smooth and also they're doing all this to make it better twin disc clutch and dual mess flywheel so that should help it be easier to shift no lift shift that's pretty cool uh, hill start aggressive first gear overdrive gears transmission oil cooler that's cool so they carried a lot of the GT350 stuff over. No lift shift is cool. Um, this is about the 10 speed. It's going to engine match, uh, rev match when you downshift, obviously. Uh, they just kind of brag about how it's a seamless transition to lower gears. It's going to start you off in second gear when you're in sport mode to keep you from spinning the tires. So apparently the first gear is really torquey. That sounds fun to me. And also they said if you're, they made note in here basically, don't try drag mode unless you're on a sticky surface because it's gonna just spin the tires is essentially what they said. So that should be interesting for the YouTube people leaving the car shows. Um, and if you're an advanced driver, it'll just be fun. Paddle shifter, obviously. 
Active grill, I didn't read this. Automatically opens and closes to maximize aerodynamic efficiency to the grill opening and to help maintain ideal engine cooling. So it's got an active grill basically to, to let air pass through when needed to cool the engine better. Aerodynamic efficiency, engine cooling. Yeah, they open up when the engine needs it and they shut when it doesn't to increase aerodynamics because actually the way aerodynamics works like the car would be more aerodynamic if you actually just made a flat front instead of these big openings because it pockets that air slows the car down so they're going to shut that off if the engine doesn't need it which would probably be like on the interstate not sitting in traffic though Okay, so rotating wheels are a major source of aerodynamic drag, so they made these slots to channel air from the front of the car open to the wheel wells, reducing drag. Cool. Gas mileage is to be determined. Uh, active performance exhaust, we kind of already knew about this. We're going to get dual and single outlet, depending on which... Uh, which car you get, which exhaust system. Uh, the active exhaust is controlled via the cluster and toggle switches. The modes are tied to specific selectable drive modes or can be overridden by the menu in the instrument. So cool. So you can you can choose. You don't have to be... It's a separate thing and they're not... They're, they're exclusive of each other. Quiet start can be set for specific times of the day, which is cool. And then it talks about quiet start, which I already made a video about that. Continuously controlled magnet ride. So let's go over this real quick. I'm going to try to wrap this video up because it's getting long. Um, the suspension responds in real time to the road without sacrificing ride comfort. Hopefully that's true. Yeah, so it's gonna it's gonna have a separately controlled computer that basically uses all these inputs: steering angle, wheel position, pitch and yaw, ambient temperature, fed to the computer, increasing or reducing roll, increasing damping or reducing roll. Dampers are filled with hydraulic fluid and fine metallic particles. When electric current passes through the fluid, the near instant adjustment of suspension performance can be made. So basically, they turn this magnet on, and it can change the viscosity of the um, of the oil because there's metallic particles in there, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So if if sensors detect a drop off at the front wheels of the vehicle, the system will adjust damping in the rear to avoid bottoming out. So it it can kind of use the front to adjust the rear. It'll get feedback from the front. Combined with other vehicle data changes can be made to each corner independent every seven milliseconds from there. So that's really fast. And each of the monitors is a piston containing two electromagnetic coils and two small fluid passages through the piston. The electromagnetics are, are, are able to create a variable magnetic field across the fluid passage. When the actual the fluid travels through the passage freely, when the magnets are turned on, the strength of on. So there you go. We know what line line lock is. Not real interested in that. You can check that out if you want. What is this? Electric power assisted steering contributes to fuel efficiency. We do electric motor operators only when you steering assisted. So the three different steering modes. And then pull drift compensation. I don't know what this is. Uses to continuous correct road irregularities to improve overall. Oh, cool. Yeah, so tram linings. Like when you're on the interstate and they have those big grooves in the interstate. And like when I, I took the, we went to Palm Springs this weekend and we were like in the, um, the lane where you're supposed to have two or more people. And it's, there's just big grooves in the road. And I just noticed the Mustang was just like, want, it, would get, it would get stuck. And it, that, groove in the road would pull the car one direction. So this will help compensate for that pull drift compensation. Reduce the steering airflow car. Oh, crowned roads, they call that a crowned road or heavy side winds. That's cool. Could have used that this weekend. Active nimble control. What is this?
So I don't know if this will numb up the steering feel, but it sounds like it would numb it up a little bit. But we'll see. It could be, it could make it better. It could make it worse. My mode allows you to probably customize your settings. We don't care about the brakes as much. Double joint. Da, 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 da. Independent integral, we know about this. We're just looking for kind of new stuff. Selectable drive modes. I'm not going to get into all this. Drag mode. Let's talk about that. Provides a performance driving experience tailored to driving on a drag strip. The engine responds directly to your inputs, and if your vehicle is equipped with an active valve, performance after takes on a more powerful tone. This mode is not intended for if your vehicle is equipped with adaptive damage, the settings operate a straight line. That's cool. So let's change the flow. Okay, cool. Helps it launch better, probably softens up the dampers, lets you launch better. Um, launch control. We already had that. Rear wheel drive advantages, provides excellent. Da, 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 da. Eliminates torques, uh, rear axles. Key features. It's 139 pages, so I'm trying to not spend so much time on this. Brake performance. Your lap timer. That's new. Um, nobody cares about the towing capacity. The EcoBoost performance pack it looks like it's about the same as it was. Oh yeah, we're getting um, Michelin Pot Sports. Super, the four. I like the silver. Silver looks great. Um, and I believe that the performance pack for the GT is the same. It's just about a thousand dollars more. Advanced track, stability control, this is just, we don't really care so much about that. Individual tire mounting, we already have that, but it looks a little different on the digital dash. Personal safety system. Okay. It's probably the most boring YouTube video ever, but if you're a Mustang geek and you don't want to just look this up on your own, then here it is. Cool. This is kind of cool. Glove box, door, and integrated knee airbags. So you're going to get it. Glove box. So the passenger doesn't break their legs. Driver knee airbag, which is cool. So that the uh, driver... It doesn't get their knees broken. Side curtain airbags, yeah, yeah, yeah. Adjustable head restraints, that's nice. Okay, that's good for the kids, keep them safe. Active anti-theft system, yeah, yeah, yeah. My key, nobody cares. Perimeter alarm, security, uh, post-crash alert system, not really worried about crashing. Ruby camera, I think as the last few years, everyone gets a Ruby camera, uh, GT or EcoBoost. Crash rating, side crash test. Okay, this is more. All the good stuff's in the beginning. Make sure I don't miss anything, guys. We'll just try to bliss. That's actually really helpful because the car's really big. Reverse sensing, I'll have that on mine. It's definitely worth it. Wiper activated headlights. I'm not sure that kind of stuff is. If it rains a lot where you're at, I guess it is. Sync 3. You can read about that. I'm not super big on tech, so I couldn't really help you much there. You're getting a new, um, well, the touch screen comes on the premiums. Sync Connect. All right, I think that's about it, guys. I just wanted to, this is mostly tech stuff, and I'm not super into that. Here's something powertrain. Just the different driving modes. Active noise control helps create a tailored sound experience by reducing or canceling unwanted low frequency noise and enhancing. Da, da, da. Microphones in the vehicle interior detect and measure the amplitude and phase of noise sound waves.
לקרוא. They tested in cold weather, extreme negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, up to 110, and they just wear the car out. So they test the crap out of these hill, hill climb tests, which is really important that they do those on the turbo engines because those under boost going up a hill at 110 degrees Fahrenheit gets a lot of uh, heat built up and can cause overheating. So that's important that they do that. And you've already seen the design and styling and all the new things that they did. It's a good looking car. There's the new colors. Key features, ambient lighting. My color, you can change the color of the dash, anything that you want. Essentially, GT Premium, Pony Package, Black Accent Package, which I like. And then you get wheel and stripe package, carbon sport interior, that's probably going to be pretty sick. Convertible, never had one, but it looks like it would be fun. Glass rear window, tonneau caps. Alright guys, I think that's it. More details here, we're not going to get into that. Anyway, so the cool details were at the beginning. So we'll go back up to the beginning. Um, basically, it's the best Mustang they've made, and it looks like it's fun to drive with the drag mode and the active exhaust and all these things. So check this link out. Um, just go to Mustang 6G, it's on, their, it's on their homepage if you want to look at the book yourself and read all the juicy details if you're that into it. Anyways, signing out. Later.